Okay, so I'm uh, I'm pleased to be uh, here and uh, giving this talk, and I'm very happy to be part of this celebration of the International Micro Microorganisms Day. Uh, the title of our, of my talk it will be "Living a Toxic Relationship: Biofilms and Nanomaterials." First of all, I like to uh, uh, describe what a biofilm is. A biofilm is a layer of microorganisms which are which normally develop over surfaces. And those organisms can develop over uh, different types of surfaces. So uh, in this slide, you can see that uh, some of those stained surfaces, which are, appear as uh, darkened surfaces, are in fact mostly comprised and made up by living organs, bacteria and other organisms. Um, in the lower, lower um, right of the image, you can see myself, I'm uh, doing some kind of uh, microclimatic monitoring of Tikal, which is a Mayan site in Guatemala, in which you see luxurious development of microorganisms living over uh, these Mayan um, the artifacts and which under certain circumstances promote degradation. But not only on ancient cities or ancient monuments, we see the development of such layers of microorganisms. We can also see them in our own households. So uh, when you see uh, these images, I took them this very morning and in, in Mexico, we have a different of uh, seven hours to, to the central Europe. And those stains that you see are made up mostly by microorganisms. Some of them produce some kind of pigments, some kind of um, uh, dyes, which protect them from the uh, aggression of the environment mainly the uh, high levels of solar irradiation. So you can see them indoors, but also outdoors. Um, if we uh, have to talk about biofilms, and I'm very pleased to have heard some of the previous presentations, these biofilms can be considered to be cities of microorganisms. So on the left side of the, the slide, you can see a very crowded building in which you see um, uh, apartments of people living there. So uh, if we have to compare ourselves to living cells of microorganisms, we could be seeing uh, at three-dimensional uh, levels the development of the organisms inside of houses. And outside, we have the walls and the ceilings well, that's part of the biofilm and it's made up mostly of exopolymeric substances, which are some kind of glues, which are produced by the organisms, which help them to attach to surfaces, but also to protect them as a um, buffer to the atmosphere. But in fact, this image that you are, I'm, I'm showing you, um, you would be seeing like a city, in fact, this self-organized uh, group of cells can develop at different levels and you see organisms living there, but also at the same time, they are perpetuating themselves to cover some surfaces. Which is interesting, another, another uh, concept is when we talk about nanomaterial. What is a nanomaterial? A nanomaterial is a type of material which is very, very small in size, but when we saw the, this material at this size, the properties, the physical and the chemical properties change a lot. And these nanomaterials can be derived or from natural resources, but also from man-made anthropogenic sources. For example, in a urban atmosphere of the exhaust of diesel and gasoline vehicles, or also as a source provided from, from the stationary combustion. So, which is very important about these nanoparticles, some of them exhibit some kind of biological activity. Um, nanomaterials have been used recently 
also to um, protect her cultural heritage. So nanomaterials can be used for the photocatalytic and their catalytic property, or also as consolidants, which is some kind of glues which uh, bring back um, um, deteriorated, degraded material. And in that way, they provide some protection to degraded materials. Um, in, uh, in our region, in the state of Campeche, which is located in southern Gulf of Mexico, southern Mexico, next to Central America, we have one of the most important Mayan sites. And um, there's been some use of nanomaterials to provide um, this consolidation in order to protect the materials. But some of these nanomaterials had also some antimicrobial properties. So recently we have been studying the potential of fungi and, uh, and other, other microorganisms in the bioweathering, in the biodegradation of the surface of limestone, which is the main building material used to, pro to, to with the Mayan used to build this magnificent culture and just to, just to give you a perspective, we still have about 800,000 people whose first language is Mayan and the second is Spanish. So this is just, just to give you an idea of the importance still of this, this Mayan, the Mayan culture. So um, when these uh, biofilms grow over the surfaces, under certain conditions, they degrade limestone and other materials. And it is very interesting to say that there is a concept which is called bioreceptivity. Bioreceptivity is the ability of a material to be colonized by living organisms. And this is a very important concept because we can use it for cultural culture protection, but also in our own houses, but all, and also in other types of materials which are prone to biological degradation. So in our case, for us, it was important to understand and to use a different approach in order to control this biological colonization. So nanoparticles uh, have been used recently because they have some kind of biological activity. They have antimicrobial activity. I think that most of us are aware with the uh, current pandemic uh, situation we're living in the world, which is caused by a virus. And we have heard that it's important that we wash our hands and that we sanitize surfaces. Well, nanomaterials and antimicrobial nanomaterials possess certain properties which are important to control microbial colonization and also antiviral properties to, um, to, 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 um, to sanitize surfaces. So in um, these antimicrobial properties have been studied for several types of metal bound nanomaterials, which is some kind of metal which is linked to a nanoparticle. There is very tiny uh, particles which uh, in, under certain circumstances, they interact with biological material. They can degrade, they can break, they can um, bind different molecules, and in doing so, they inactivate microorganisms. And also, they can produce some kind um, of uh, chemical species like the reactive, reactive oxygen species. And it's very interesting because this reactive oxygen species is some kind of the same procedure, which is normally uh, um, important for aging in higher organisms like ourselves. So this, in these slides, I'm just showing you that this is very important that we consider the shape and the size of the nanoparticles and the type of metal which is used to conduct cell death. So there is use of copper, of silver, and also titanium dioxide, which is very, very important in, in, in this case and to provide this kind of antimicrobial activities. 
In this slide, I'm showing you that this biofilms, under certain circumstances, it is very important that we control, control them because they, at the first sight, they produce some kind of aesthetic deterioration. But under certain conditions, you can see this slide, it's interesting, this is um, a location in Japan. So an artist considered the importance of this biofilm and he just scrapped around the wall and he left the, the, the shape of an apple. And to the right uh, most side of, of the slide, you can see myself, I'm in, in Germany, I'm seeing and this slab of sandstone under this um, art item of, um, uh, of uh, an, an, an alloy of metals, you're seeing there is li some, some, uh, some lixiviation of ions. And it is very interesting because the grayish and greenish coverage over the slab is mostly biofilm, but under the lixiviation of the uh, the runoff of uh, of, um, of the materials you are seeing mostly the sandstone which is in a pink uh, appearance which is in this case is producing a natural uh, control of the biofilm so as you can imagine in science there are many different types of tests or different types of conditions what we test to see if a new nanomaterial is important and is relevant for control of different types of organisms and different types of methods to determine if they are efficient. And just, just to show you in these slides, uh, some of the previous studies that have been uh, published in uh, the specialist literature um, that uh, some of these, these greenish or blackish surfaces over the walls or over the, the ceilings, mostly on outer surfaces, are very important. And under certain conditions, we see this efficiency, which is in, important to control those organisms. Just to give you a perspective, in, in, in Mexico, for, for example, in southern Mexico, we have um, in uh, Yucatan, the Yucatan Peninsula, we have temperatures in, uh, which reach perhaps over the surface 55 uh, uh, Celsius de degrees. And when you have the coverage of biofilms and we, you don't have them and you just eradicate them, there is a difference of between 10 and 12 Celsius degrees. So you can imagine what is the biophysical impact of biofilms growing over a seal, over, over the roof of a house on the gain of heat and how much it costs for a household to pay for energy using air conditioning. So this is a way which is very important to understand the impact of these biological entities in our living and, and daily conditions. So I, I was explaining to you, there is a different ways of, uh, of making those assessments to, to see if those organisms can be important, those, those nanomaterials, sorry, are important, are, are, are efficient to control the colonization and uh, the, the uh, viability of organisms. Um, this is just to show you these, these very dark surfaces, which are mostly associated to outdoor environments on this uh, religious building in my home city of Campeche. And you see that mostly in those areas, when you see the runoff of water, you see mostly these a association of biofilms. And these kind of pigments um, mostly are produced by cyanobacteria, which are some kind of phototrophic organisms, which are uh, lower plants uh, like. And those organisms are producing those pigments because they need to protect themselves from these uh, desiccation conditions, high UV, high radiation. And these pigments are, and some of them are uh, very similar to the melanin that we have in our cells, cells on our skin, because this is another biological adaptation to uh, protect ourselves to excessive uh, irradiation that we have in these locations. So these black biofilms which colonize limestone are mostly uh, dominated by cyanobacteria. I'm showing you here one, um, those, those areas, in some people have asked me in some uh, conferences if uh, the building will, be, will fall apart 
because the biological colonization of, no, of course not, but you don't really need to have a excessive or um, colonization of, of microorganisms to see or to lose uh, the integrity of a, of, of a building. In here, in yellow, you can see there is a warrior carved over the surface. So if you have biological colonization and you are not able to see the uh, iconic uh, representation of the warrior, you're losing cultural heritage. And cultural heritage is not only related to tourism, it's also related to our own identity as people in different languages. So uh, another aspect of our research deals also with the ecotoxicological consequences of releasing nanoparticles in the environment. So you, we can use some kind of treatment to control the biofilms, but we also need to understand that if those nanoparticles are active, is because they can also have a potential impact over other non-target organisms. And this is very important for us. So in, uh, in order to meet the, the time, just I'm just showing you, this is my team, our work group. We, we will work in one of these areas. And just want to emphasize, I'm just very, very happy to have uh, been here and be part of this very important initiative. We need to increase the literacy of microbiological sciences among uh, the public, among the men at the street level. Thank you. Thank you very much for this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you so much for a very interesting talk from a very, very important angle. I mean, uh, discussing microbiology, microbial degradation uh, in the context of uh, protecting cultural heritage is something I haven't thought about before. And uh, I really great to hear your perspective on it and to hear the important work that you're doing.